I came across uh, a very interesting clip. It's of a gentleman, I believe you all know, that was advocating for the use of tobacco. Maybe not directly, but he was definitely putting it in a very, very positive light. Let's see the clip. I love tobacco. So my diet is particularly strange, I've been told. I live on ca caffeine and nicotine. So I eat once a day, I eat dinner only. 80% of my calories come from meat. I have 10 cups of coffee a day and three or four large cigars. So I like caffeine and nicotine. I do too. Yeah, it makes me feel good. Uh, it makes me feel like my blood's on fire a little bit. Caffeine and nicotine I think are fantastic. And but you're, a, you're a health guy, obviously. I'm a health guy, but um, smoking is, mass, is, is fantastic for your testosterone level. And I think that's important in a man. I think it's also important in the resistance of slavery is as a whole. really, you can feel it. Oh, 100%. And I'm not saying that, you know, smoking's healthy. I'm not saying that because I also train exceptionally hard every single day. And when I was professionally fighting, I didn't smoke. But I think in general, testosterone level is a fantastic way to measure your overall health as a man. But, but nicotine has a positive correlation to testosterone. Absolutely. Levels. It's been proven. Yep. It's been proven repeatedly. I thought, can it really be true? It is actually true. I looked into it. And out of the 16 studies that looked into the correlation between tobacco and testosterone only two proved a negative correlation whereas seven studies proved a neutral correlation and seven studies proved a positive correlation between tobacco and testosterone and the more you smoke the more testosterone you get you start seeing the benefits especially after you reach beyond 20 cigarettes a day and the only thing in these studies that speaks against smoking is this lh level which was a bit higher in previous smokers. The LH is a hormone that is responsible for producing sperm and testosterone. And, but again, that's only a 7% difference. It's not entirely convincing compared to 15% higher testosterone. That's a huge number. And if you don't know, testosterone is responsible for your drive, your sex drive, your libido, your muscle mass, all these amazing things. And watching this clip, I now understand why there are so many boys on Instagram posing with cigars in their teeth, trying to look all tough. Yes, because your daddy smokes, you start smoking as well. There is a very positive scientific correlation between that as well. However, I looked into it because I thought there must be something more to this. You can't really speak about testosterone without mentioning the winner effect. These two things go hand in hand. In fact, some people say that the winner effect can tenfold temporarily your increase in testosterone. So, for example, researchers collected samples from 26 male fans watching the televised broadcast of a final match between Brazil and Italy. In both studies, testosterone levels increased about 20% in fans of winning teams and decreased about 20% in fans of losing teams. Another study showed overall men who thought they had won they had 15% higher levels of testosterone. Just by thinking and carrying yourself as a boss through life, you are already 15% higher. Okay, so we know that testosterone is this fluctuating thing, it's, but it's basically just a number, right? It's basically just a number. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything if we don't look at the outcomes. So, for example, when we look at the winner and loser effect, we can see that this is actually something that works. It's something that you can use. A study looked into tennis matches found that a very close win or loss in a set has a substantial effect on the chance of winning the next set. The study focused on situations where players end up winning or losing the first set by a very small margin. Two points at the end of the tiebreak lasting more than 20 points. It finds that the winner of the first set has 60% chances of winning the second set compared to 40% of the loser of the first set. So if you're already a winner in life, if you start your day as a winner, you're gonna win, 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 win. You're gonna continue winning. Your chance of winning more is gonna increase, thereby increasing and amplifying and compounding the effect of testosterone throughout the day. It's how nature primes winners to push on and keep winning and for losers to withdraw and recover. Now let's look into the correlation between nicotine and the outcomes. An older study from 2007 involving 16 people found that smoking interrupts processes of muscle growth. Specifically, the researchers found that smoking reduced the production of proteins for muscle repair and suppressed genes that maintain muscle. A systematic 
review from 2017 found that 16 out of 28 studies suggest that nicotine increased heart rate compared with a placebo, which can improve athletic performance. Surprise, surprise, just like caffeine, you're raising your heart rate, you're taking a stimulant, you're snorting a line of coke, you become a jittery dog that starts moving around. Maybe that makes you feel like a winner, maybe that compiles, maybe that just makes you feel better about yourself. I don't know. But like so far, all I can see is it increases your heart rate if it does anything at all. Another study showed that nicotine can reduce testosterone production and this is because it increases your cortisol levels, which breaks down muscle tissue, impairing muscle growth, recovery and performance. So what other things can increase testosterone? Let's think, hmm, exercise, sleep. In fact, sleep, the effects of sleep loss on testosterone levels were apparent after just one week of short sleep. Five hours of sleep decreased their testosterone levels by 10% to 15%. So okay, up to 15% increase just by sleeping properly. The same amount that you will gain from smoking. So far, we haven't seen any positive outcomes when it comes to smoking and muscle growth or performance or anything for that matter. And I don't accept the whole heart rate thing because watch my video about caffeine about that. That is a nonsensical argument. Raising your heart rate by extension, raising your cortisol levels and thereby making you do positive actions. Okay, it's the equivalent of snorting a line of coke in order for you to man up and go and talk to a girl on the street that you're in love with or whatever. It's the equivalent of, yeah. But you're not an idiot, so we're not gonna do more of these analogies for now. We're gonna continue. Okay, so we know that sleep will increase your testosterone by 15%. But again, what is the outcome of that? Maybe that doesn't mean anything. Maybe you can just get away with sleeping five hours a day and, and your life will not change much. And what researchers found was that individuals who slept 5.5 hours had 60% less muscle at the end of the study, while those who slept 8.5 hours had 40% more muscle mass. That's crazy. Proper sleep is vital to help you perform optimally during training sessions, boost endurance and enhance mindset. So yeah, better and faster muscle growth, better mindset, better vital health, better sleep is probably one of the most important things that you should worry about getting. It's so sensitive that every second, every second counts. So what about the correlation between nicotine and sleep? Just like we saw caffeine for each cup, for each sip of caffeine you drink, Throughout, even if it's in the morning, even if you only drink coffee in the morning and you're like, oh, I read the regulations in the FDA, even if you only drink in the morning, you're still going to reduce your REM. Every sip will reduce a couple of minutes of your REM sleep. And we just saw how ultra sensitive sleep is to your overall health and your performance and your mindset and all these important things. And there's a study here. According to a study conducted at the University of Florida, for every one cigarette you smoke, your total sleep time decreases by one minute and 20 seconds. This doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of the night, it can be physically demanding. So you smoke a pack of cigarettes, you drink a cup of coffee, that's already an hour of sleep gone. Statistically, that's already a 15% drop in testosterone. So then you wake up the next morning and then you have to drink 10 cups of coffee and 10 packs of cigarettes and increase over time just to feel normal, just to reach your own baseline. I think we wrapped around the whole thing pretty, pretty, pretty good right now. I think you have a, a pretty good picture of how it all correlates, how sleep and testosterone and performance and, uh, and what you should do instead. You should exercise. Exercise is actually proven. It can increase your testosterone by 20% and over time, not just a temporary effect. If you exercise just for 30 minutes, three times a week, you will increase your T levels by 20% over time. Okay. That's very important. Very important. Not a temporary effect like with the football fans who go up and down like uh, drug addicts. You will gradually become better and better every day. There are no shortcuts to masculinity. There are no shortcuts to testosterone. In fact, there is not a single pleasure out there that is beneficial to you. In fact, the more pleasures you say no to, the better you are, the stronger you are. Just 